So thank you for attending this Vantage Point speaker series uh, from the College of Business Worldwide. This one is on artificial intelligence, and I'd like to introduce uh, our two uh, wonderful speakers uh, who will be having a live conversation, uh, which will be addressing artificial intelligence and its place and potential within the aviation industry. Our first speaker is uh, Jason. Jason Dunkermitt is the product owner for the operations planning team at NetJets Aviation out of Columbus, Ohio. Uh, during his 24 years with NetJets, uh, Jason has worked with and led various teams in the operation and owner services areas of the business. In his current role, uh, he is responsible for the successful development and delivery of software products for the operation and operations planning teams. Jason earned his private license from Embry-Riddle okay. in 1991 and is a graduate of Kent State University with a Bachelor of Science degree in aerospace technology. Jason, thank you for joining us and thank you for doing this for us. Uh, we're happy to have you. Our second thank speaker you, alongside is uh, Shelly Freeman. She is the Chief Operating Officer at Bold IQ. Shelly has over 20 years of experience with the vast majority of time being spent with uh, startups. She has led a number of strategic teams across customer success, finance, product, sales, and professional service. Shelly has had the unique experience of helping multiple startups exit successfully through acquisitions. She holds an executive MBA from University of Washington and a business corporate communication degree from the Pacific Lutheran University. Shelly, I welcome you both once again. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for taking the time to, to address and speak to such a wonderful topic. So uh, I'm gonna turn it over to, to both of you, Jason and Shelly. Jason and I are both excited to be here with you guys today. Um, as you now know who we are, we'll go through a quick overview of NetJets and give you NetJets at a glance, an overview of Bold IQ and who we are. Um, we'll talk about our partnership and then we will go into some more details about how AI is and, te and technology are transforming the operations at NetJets. Um, throughout the whole conversation, please ask questions in the chat box. It's open, it's being monitored, and I know Jason is happy to answer any questions you might have. <laughs> so with that, <laughs> I'll let Jason go ahead and give you an overview of NetJets. It's very kind of you, Shelley. Thank you. And, and to everybody at Ember Rimmel, thank you very much for having us. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, uh, as, as Manish mentioned, I, I did attend Ember Rimmel for a year, uh, so it's exciting to be back and speaking to this team. Uh, it was a good time when I was there. Uh, so uh, happy to uh, call Ember Riddle home uh, for that time frame. Uh, so starting off, uh, just talking about NetJets for those that may be familiar with NetJets or those that aren't or um, may have just a, a very uh, high level knowledge of what we do. We just want to start off with what we do. Uh, so our mission and our mission is very important. It's to enhance the life of each other, one exceptional travel experience at a time. So how do we do that? When we're building the schedule at NetJets, it's really about how do we make sure that we maintain that, that thought process and that attitude every time we put a schedule, uh, a schedule together. And that's really based off of safety and safety of our owners, our crew members, and our team members is the first consideration. Uh, we always say here, safety then service. It's a driving principle for how we operate in NetJets. And it's really the guiding principle that ensures that this mission is achieved on every flight. When we talk about NetJets, um, excuse me, when we talk about NetJets, I, I put some stats up here uh, so everybody can see them and, and can marvel at uh, all that we do uh, with NetJets. It is there to dazzle, but it's also there for an important point to talk about the AI piece and how AI is really helping us build a schedule that can be very complex. When we look at what we do at NetJets, there's three companies, three main companies that we have. I am currently located in Columbus, Ohio with NetJets Aviation. Uh, we have an office in Europe, in Lisbon, Portugal, that's in our NetJets Europe office. Uh, both offices focus around you know, traveling uh, our owners around the world, NJA primarily focused in North America, and NJE primarily focused in the European theater of operation, but can go anywhere. And our EJM, uh, Executive Jet Management Office, which is based out of Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, which is a management company for uh, uh, aircraft owners. So if you own your own aircraft, you could approach EJM about managing that aircraft for you, managing your crew members, managing the maintenance program. And, if necessary, if you felt like uh, when you weren't using the aircraft to charter it out, an EJM could manage that for you as well. When we talk about the stats that you see here, this is for all three companies and this is for 2019. And we could have pulled 2020 stats, but I wanted to keep it at 2019 because it's really indicative of what we do on a, on a typical year basis. Um, and you can see here, just some numbers I'm gonna call out for you specifically, 7,000 employees, almost half of those are crew members. 
um, almost 3,400 crew members, 9,000 orders worldwide. And again, between all three companies, 3,500 airports that we go to, 212 territories and countries that we that we are able to, to take off and land from. This isn't uh, just a charter company that owns a few aircraft, 750 aircraft worldwide. If you put all of that together, we would be the fourth largest airline in the world. Um, so a lot of owners, a lot of uh, employees, a lot of places that we go, a lot of aircraft. What does that mean? And how does that translate to what we do and how we manage that? So let's focus on just NJA for just a second. Uh, we have about 438 aircraft here at NJA right now. Um, we, our owners, and all 9,000 owners, can give us as little as four hours notice that they want to go from A to B, wherever that may be. Um, and for that, it, we're, we're able to respond to that very quickly. Now, most owners have a 10 hour response time and that varies if we do, depending on where they wanna go. Uh, but you can, as you can imagine, just because you have a 10 hour response time or a four hour response time, when we're in a service injury industry, again, you know, enhancing the life of each owner, one exceptional travel experience at a time doesn't mean if you tell me you wanna go in an hour that I tell you, we'll get you in 10 hours. We try to get them as quickly as possible. We try to recover that. We try to make sure that we can, uh, again, enhance that owner's life, make sure that they're taken care of because whatever they're doing is very important. We want to make sure we're a part of that. And we can uh, be a seamless part of that, of that travel for them. 750 aircraft, uh, again, the fourth largest airline in the world, if you put that all together, essentially with that response time with our owners, with that aircraft, we're essentially an on-demand airline, which as you can imagine is very tricky to manage through. And that's why we need to leverage a partnership like Bold IQ uh, to, to help us manage through that. So just to kind of give you a feel for what we do at NJA every day, uh, we have 350, on average, about 350 owner flights a day. We have about 800 uh, crew members that we utilize every day, and we have about 360 available aircraft every day. So take your owners, take your aircraft, take your crew members, put that all together, and then throw about 300, not an exaggeration, rules that we put on top of that, whether those are federal aviation regulations, if they're contractual obligations we have for the crew members, or if they're just rules that we have internally for process management. All those have to be managed together to build a schedule that's both financially efficient and runs on time. And again, leveraging that partnership with Bold IQ, their AI system and solver, really uh, is what helps us manage to that level of success in such a complex environment. With that, I'll turn it back over to Shelly to talk about Bold IQ. Thanks, Jason. Jason, real quickly, we did have a question come in about NetJets. Um, just uh, what's the ratio of company-owned aircraft to privately owned aircraft? Um, I don't know that I have that information right off the top of my head. Um, I can certainly find it for you and then definitely get an answer back to you on that piece. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure, but if you're talking about the privately owned aircraft from an EJM perspective, uh, or if you're talking about the privately owned aircraft, like maybe the aircraft that NetJet zones, uh, if there's a little bit more clarification on that, I can certainly find an answer for you on that piece. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Um, so Bold IQ's mission is to um, provide state-of-the-art technology that allows our clients to operate at a greater utilization. So fully optimize their assets. So as Jason was talking about, pilots, crews, airplanes, airplanes to maximize their efficiency all in real time. Over the past 10 years, we've been developing our AI-driven software to embrace the constant change and disruptions that our customers experience in their operations on a daily basis, even sometimes on an hourly or minute-by-minute -minute basis. As Jason said, they're flying a lot of aircraft. They're dealing with a lot of different scenarios that play out throughout the day. Um, so we allow our customers to create optimal and actionable, feasible plans that are adherent to all the rules and regulations, um, whether that be operational schedules, so for instance, with NetJets, we um, work with them to create next day schedules or two day schedules. With other clients, they may create seven day schedules or upwards of a 30 month or 30 day schedule, a month schedule for their crews. We allow our customers to recover from disruption in real time. So we um, can isolate the operational schedule to allow those customer or to allow our customers to, um, to recover from from the, that disruption that may happen during the day. So it could be a good disruption. It could be that they're getting new bookings in. So as Jason said, within four hours, they have to fulfill those new bookings that they have come in. So it may be good disruptions. It may also be bad disruptions, weather delays, unplanned, unplanned grounding, 
of an um, airplane because maybe a windshield got chipped, crew getting sick, unexpected airport, airport closures. So there's a lot of different types of disruptions that happen throughout the day. And we allow our customers to isolate their operational schedule and handle those real-time disruptions within seconds and get multiple solutions back to recover from those disruptions. We also help our customers with instant availability checks. So as new demand comes in, they have the ability to look at their fleet, to look at their crew, see where everybody's at and understand instantly if they can fulfill that new demand that's coming in. We also help our customers with long-term planning. Um, so as customers are looking to set up new maintenance spaces or they're looking to um, create new hubs for their, um, for their crew, they can do some long-term planning and understand what the cost of that's going to be to their schedule on a daily basis. Um, as we're doing all of these different things, we have to take into account, as Jason was saying, all of the aspects of these complex operations, including all of the demand that they have, the resources that they have, the objectives of the day. And Jason will give you some great examples later on about how objectives change, how some of the objectives changed for NetJets as COVID hit um, a year ago, and as they had to change the way that they they did cruise the way they overnighted their crews and they had to make some significant changes to their operations. Um, we also have to take into account all the business rules um, and regulations, the FAA regulations, EASA regulations, different country regulations. Like Jason said, there's upwards of 300 business rules that we have to apply each time we create these schedules or create these disruption recovery scenarios for our customers. So how we do this is we actually have a generic heuristic engine um, that we use to solve the problems. So all of these problems, as you can imagine, are intractable problems. They're hard to control. They're hard to deal with due to the size and complexity um, of these, these problems. So we take a holistic approach and solve the entire problem, not a simplified version of the problem. We take the problems from start to finish to ensure that it's both feasible and an optimal solution. Um, we use user-defined problems in real time so that users get to define their problems within real time with APIs that we've created. So they can decide at that moment what the constraints and parameters are for those problem sets. So it allows a lot of flexibility for our users and NetJets will talk, Jason will talk about how NetJets does this on a daily basis. We've also had to develop proprietary language that we use in front of that problem. We formulate the problem, we model that problem, and that allows us to send that problem into our generic engine. Um, so the heuristic engine that, that creates these solutions for our customers. It's very powerful. Um, it gives us flexibility in solving multiple problem sets and that generic engine can be used across multiple um, different verticals. So aviation being one of those, logistics, some other different verticals. So that's how we've applied, um, or that's how we have created our solution to solve these problems. We are in the cloud. Um, we have, so that allows us to dynamically scale with a very high performance and parallel processing. So with that, Jason, I'll let you talk a little bit more about our partnership. Um, Shelly, if you wanna, if you wouldn't mind, we do have a few questions for you that have come in. Is this a good time? Sure. <laughs> so Bold IQ able to transfer um, this to a different industry, for example, a manufacturing environment? Yes, absolutely. So again, that's that the generic engine that we've created and that proprietary language that sits in front of the engine allows us, and we do have customers today in logistics and mobile workforce management in other areas so that we can solve these types of complex problems across industries. Awesome, and I'm not familiar with part 121, but the question is given the complexity of NetJets, is Bold IQ offering this to the part 121 community? We, we are, yes. Yep, we work across different aviation sectors as well. And, and have all of those rule sets in-house today. Great, and then um, does Bold IQ integrate with maintenance scheduling programs like the operating at CAMO system? All very good questions and yes, we do. So in many of the scenarios, NetJets included, we're integrating into multiple systems um, to get the amount of information that we need to create these schedules. So we have to know, we've got to know where the crew are. We've got to know the crew qualifications. We've got to know about the airplane. We have to have, airport information. So we've got to understand those 300 and some odd airports, right? The hours of operation, what types of airplanes they can take. So we are um, able to integrate into multiple solutions. And yes, maintenance being a key one of those solutions. Awesome, uh, we'll do one more right now. Uh, when you mentioned the proprietary language, are you saying you developed your own computing language at Bold IQ to process the AI software? 
We've developed our, yes, our own language that sits in front of the engine. So that language really transforms the information that we receive out of the systems. And, and Jason will talk about their system specifically, which is called Fusion. We take that information out of there. Um, we transform that information and we push it into our engines. So yes, that's all proprietary or proprietary um, in-house development work that we've done. Thank you so much. Yep. Thanks for the good questions. Sina didn't have to answer one of them, Charlie. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> um, so talking about our partnership, uh, so in 2017, we entered into a, a, a partnership with Bold IQ uh, to really you know, combine the power of their software, with, which is Solver, with our front-end scheduling system, which we call Fusion. Now, Fusion has a reason for being named that. Um, at NetJets, we have a lot of different systems that we operate with, a lot of different products. Um, that at times we're talking separately from each other and not necessarily all working together to build our schedule. When we came up with the concept for Fusion and we came up with a name for Fusion, it was a lot of back and forth uh, that ended up coming into the idea that we really needed to combine all those systems along with the human elements of how the schedule is built into one system that could really be the hub or the engine that builds our schedule uh, consistently. So with that, uh, Fusion bringing in a bunch of different systems, bringing in the HUMA, lots of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis to build that schedule, again, fusing everything together. When we went back to look for, uh, and we had a system prior to this, when we looked, went to look for a new system, uh, we wanted to make sure that we managed three areas effectively because these were three areas that were lacking before, speed, flexibility, and automation. Really the speed element of this is to make sure that the system works quickly our previous system uh, would take as much as 45 minutes to an hour to optimize and build a schedule for us. That's a long time. That's a long time anywhere. It's a long time for us specifically, and it really kind of uh, restricted our ability to do more things with the system uh, to try to improve it and enhance it. So what we needed to find was a system that could work quickly with us. What we want to do ultimately with Fusion and what we want to ultimately do with our optimization software is to have something that is optimizing our schedule continuously. Uh, that's actually the, the ultimate goal of the project is continuous optimization so that it's running constantly in the background and building schedules and being very uh, minimally disruptive to the people that are actually working through the schedule at any given time. To, uh, to, uh, to manage that, we've obviously worked with Bold IQ to make sure that their system is able to be very quick when it's opt with its optimization and still provide a quality schedule. Uh, we started off with a system that would run at 5.30 in the morning here Eastern time and would take about an hour, you know, about 30 minutes to run, which was you know, a good time at that time of the morning to run. As so we look to do more continuous running and running throughout the day, those times need to be quicker. So we're actually able to take what we built at 5.30 in the morning and here, uh, here at NJA, we're building actually two days worth of the schedule. So we take that two days worth of schedule and we're able to re-optimize that at uh, another time during the day, but we're able to do it very quickly because the schedule's mostly out there. So Solver is able to take that information from Fusion and provide that back very quickly, usually about 15 minutes. And as you can imagine, that's still disruptive in some ways, but it's certainly not 45 minutes to an hour, uh, which is really good. So we're able to get a schedule in and out very quickly and minimize the disruptions of the business. And again, we'll continue to build on that as AI continues to improve, as Fusion improves, and as Solver improves, as we work together to improve those systems to increase that speed. Flexibility. Um, as with any business, rules change, right? Uh, products change. The things that we want to deliver to our owners to make sure we're enhancing their lives changes uh, relatively quickly. And, and we need to make sure that we have a system that's flexible with that, that can manage those changes. Um, rules change. Um, you know, I mentioned that we have, you know, contractual obligations for our crew members. Those rules change as well, both at NJA and NJE. So we need to make sure that our system can keep up with that. Our previous system couldn't. Two to three weeks to make a change, two to three weeks to revert that change if we wanted to take it back out. That's an eternity. Uh, with our agile development process, with a dedicated product owner, which is me, with a dedicated uh, IT team, we're able to make those changes. And IT teams, both at Bold IQ and at NetJets, we're able to make those changes very quickly. Not that this number means much to anybody that's outside of NetJets, but we were able to do 38 releases in 2019 or 2020. That's pretty good. That's a release every nine days. So we're able to update our system every nine days uh, with both information from Bold IQ and from, and from uh, internally to make sure that our system is constantly up to date with what's going on within the business. So that flexibility is very important. We also wanted to make sure we can control whatever type of schedule we wanted to build. In our previous system, we couldn't. 
Uh, with this now we can we can add different rules we can remove different rules we, we can change different settings on the uh, on the go to make sure that we're able to build a schedule that matches the needs of the business at any given moment third piece was automation we needed to make sure the system could do it on its own um, but we needed to make sure that we didn't have to have somebody uh there pressing the button uh to make sure that the system was working and, and was constantly going we've set this up to be automated so as i mentioned we run fusion multiple times a day um, in two different systems that we have here. Our planning system actually runs three times a day. It's automated uh, to run those three times. And um, our recovery system is actually automated to run anytime that there's a recovery event that's created for us. So that automation really plays into the fact that, that, uh, that we need to be nimble and, and allow a system to do the things that a system should do, some of these routine tasks, and allow the people that are building the schedule to focus on more of the human elements. We talk about AI in this presentation and we talk about how great it is. There's still a lot of things that need to happen with AI to make it even better. And one of those things is managing those gray areas within the rule sets that we have. Uh, not all rule sets are black and white or off and on. And that's where you really need the, the schedulers that are there working on that to really kind of manage through and massage those um, human elements of the schedule uh, while Fusion and Solver work on the background to make sure that the rest of the schedule is managed accordingly. So again, speed, flexibility, automation, we're able to do all those things now. We just continue to improve upon those as we move forward with the system and as we work together with Bold IQ. Yeah, and, and to support what NetJets and, and what their team is doing, obviously we've had to build a very robust 24-7 support system behind that. We've had to build a very flexible piece of software that allows for those updates. And like um, Jason said, we work in sync with them on the Agile um, development process so that we can release um, new rule sets, release you know new changes that they need to see very quickly to give them that flexibility in the system. Um, and so we've had to build that on the back, back end. We've had to build our system so that it can easily ingest and take new rule sets so we can easily test those rule sets and ensure that they don't you know affect the 300 other rules that are in the system today. So it gets very complex, but we've able, been able to build libraries that allow us to really quite easily modify and add information to the system as NetJets and our other clients um, need those changes or as FAA changes their rules or EASA. Um, and then of course, you know, we understand that this is so critical to their business and critical to them running every day. So we've put in that um, robust support behind it to ensure that we support them 24 seven, as Jason has teams also that are working around the clock to ensure that they continuously run and, and everything runs smoothly for their teams on the, on the front end. This is a good time for a couple questions. Uh, let me let me clear a few. Um, given the great amount of data sharing, can you comment on Bold IQ's cybersecurity posture and any developing threats you see coming on the horizon? You know, that's a great question, and that's part of the reason that we are in the cloud. Um, that we do use Azure in this instance is the provider we use. They have top-notch security, um, so we do on both sides. Um, NetJets uses uses Azure as well and so um, we use the security that they offer actually uh shelly we use aws um so it's aws on our side that connects with your azure uh, okay thank you connection. So, <laughs> thanks sure. for clarifying yeah yeah <laughs> but we both rely heavily on the you know the large companies that are doing this today and the, the security that absolutely. they bring forward because they're the best at what they do absolutely and when we talk about safety and, and that safety of uh of you know being a, a pillar of what we do safety then service um our I IT security is, is part of that safety element to our business. We need to make sure that all of our data is safe and secure and, and working with AWS and, and being able to work with Azure as well um, has helped us uh, ensure that that security is there. Thank you. Uh, I, I can tell you it's always top of mind, right? For yes. all companies to ensure that that data is secure. Thank you. Uh, what would be the average scope of operations under one account using the same software? Do companies that have multiple focuses use the same software to unify the multiple areas of business? If I'm understanding that question correctly, it's it's if you had like a fleet management portion, maybe a logistics like trucking, and you're trying to kind of combine it all. Am I understanding that correctly? And could you use the same solver instance to solve multiple problem sets? I, I assume that's the, the direction. Okay, I, I think that's what they're um, asking. And yes, we do have customers that do that. And you know, even, you know, NetJets is a good example of this, right? We have 
their aircraft, which is an asset. We have crew, we have pilots, all of them have different requirements, right? So we're able to kind of put those all together in the same instance. But yes, and you know, in other instances for customers, we could we could put logistics, we could put trucks along with aircraft, um, and and we do have the ability to, to kind of push that all together. Great. And then, can you just um, give us a little more clarification on intract intractable problems uh, that were mentioned earlier? Uh, one of our faculty from their CS days remembers this phrase as being synonymous with being, you can't solve this problem in your lifetime. <laughs> well, I hope that's not the case. So intractable is actually a word that our OR scientists use. And um, the definition of it is it, it's a very hard problem to solve, a very complex problem to solve. So that's, that's why we kind of use that as our um, one of the words to describe these problems is they're not simple problems. We're not trying to get a person from A to B. Uh, we are trying to complete these complex scheduling program pro problems. As Jason said, right, you've got multiple different um, dynamic, right, ever-changing um, elements that come into these problems. So we've got pilots, we've got aircraft, we've got crew, we've got um, landing, we've got takeoff, we've got the regulations of the crews. Um, sometimes you have visa requirements. There's all these different things that we have to put into one problem set to come up with a solution. So it's it, in a definition of it, it's just a very hard um, problem to solve. But I'm not gonna argue with a professor if there's a better definition. I'll, I'll find a better word to use next time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, one more for right now. Um, does the system work for general aviation with no schedule as compared to a commercial uh, aviation with a schedule with since these are two different operation models. Yeah, very different operation models. And yes, it works in both worlds. So if there is a set schedule, um, what we can do is, is we can abide by that set schedule and we can um, take the crew on top of that set schedule and, and optimize the crew on top of, of the flights that they've already got scheduled. Also, disruption recovery works very well in that scenario. So when you've got um, you know, a, a set schedule that you're flying, I'm very unlike what NetJets does is there's this very real time when there is a disruption to those schedules. Um, for instance, New York shuts down, massive disruption. Trying to get those schedules back on track is something that we can help solve with a real time disruption um, and, and get them back on track much more quickly. So that's where the AI comes into play in those types of scenarios. Thank you very much. What are the current or future challenges for using international air traffic management data and communication information systems, specifically navigation, positioning, and timing systems? I don't know that there's a specific challenge uh, for you know, in this space as far as as far as uh, the optimization of, of software. I can really see that using that information, um, you know, as far as understanding where aircraft are. Um, in real time to really understand how we can recover uh, for events. You know, it, it's always good to know where your aircraft are. And in that situation, I could see using that information and leveraging that information to really, you know, hey, the aircraft is here and it would be great if we could drop them in to pick up a recovered, you know, to recover this trip to, to do that type of, uh, to do that type of scheduling. Th that's where I see it from an optimization of the schedule standpoint. Um, obviously, there's things we can learn from that information as we gather it up after the fact and could possibly help us out there as well. And hopefully, uh, hopefully, Jennifer, that answers your question. Thank you very much. And uh, does NetJet advocate for airport LPV approaches? As far as advocating for those approaches, absolutely. Uh, the, the more precise we can get, the, the better navigation that we have to get to the airport. Absolutely, I would say that we certainly advocate for that. Um, and I know that in the past, uh, without giving too many details, I know that in the past we have worked with different airports to create those approaches uh, to ensure that our aircraft can get in and out and, and can perform safely uh, to make sure that they're able to uh, arrive and, and depart from those airports. Let me answer the next yeah, please. question Go ahead. Um, from Jason. So he's asking about pilots, crews, airplanes, and maximizing efficiency at net jets. Um, and is that operating a regular schedule or is that building a schedule based on the owner's needs, I think is the question there. And as I th think Jason alluded to earlier, so it's it's all about base, building a schedule based on owner's needs. There are no set flights. Um, from a NetJets perspective, they have somewhere, sometimes four hours, sometimes a little bit longer to fulfill the needs of their customers when they request a flight to get them, by the time they request to get them up in the air, sometimes they have li as little as four hours. So that schedule is dynamically changing 
all the time and we're constantly building it for um, NetJets on a daily and sometimes hourly or minute basis as those new requests come through. Thank you so much for those answers. Um, and if, if we do have time for one more here, um, it was just a clarification on the privately owned um, aircraft that you might be maintaining or leasing as opposed to NetJets owned aircraft. So uh, the aircraft that we have at NJ and NJE are owned. Um, obviously, we're, you know, we have fractional ownership, which is the which is the program that we have. Uh, so that fractional ownership piece is um, allows most of our owners to you know be a, a be listed as an owner on those aircraft. And that just obviously operates as aircraft for our owners. But when we talk about our EJM operation, um, we're looking at probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 to 200 aircraft uh, that are owned by. Um, by that, by that entity, but then are managed by EJM. Uh, so really when you're talking about the, the, the aircraft that NetJets owns versus the aircraft that are owned privately, that's your ratio. Thank you. And, and is there a set of rules built in that takes into account crew rest requirements, fatigue management system per se? Actually, yeah, we do have a very robust fatigue management system here at NetJets um, that allows us to manage that. Again, safety being the number one, you know, safety and service, safety being the number one priority for our company. We want to make sure that we are managing that fatigue uh, risk management uh, effectively. And actually, I would, I would call it, personally, we call it a leading edge uh, and certainly an industry, uh, industry uh, benchmark for how we manage fatigue for our crew members. Um, it is uh, obviously it's a very it's a very serious concern and we want to make sure that we're taking care of it seriously so we do have some fatigue risk management software internally and then we also try to leverage a lot of the, what we've learned from that fatigue, uh, fatigue risk management software to help fusion manage the schedule as well uh, effectively so that we're not trying to create those scenarios that would be fatiguing situations for our crew members thank you very much i do notice that there's some um, several hands raised uh, if you wouldn't mind just typing your questions right into the q a and we'll make we'll get to as many as we can but um, jason and shelly if, if you would like to continue i'll keep collecting questions okay great we will skip ahead and talk a little bit more about our partnership did you want to talk about the uh uh the shared vision shelly oh did i skip it sorry i'm going back jason okay. <laughs> Just want to make sure, um, because I love this quote. I just want to talk about this quote. It's my favorite part of the presentation. Um, so with this, uh, you know, we do obviously a, a partnership that we have. It, it has to be very robust. We have to have a shared vision for what we want to accomplish. And you know, Shelly and I talked about this quite a bit. And it, this is something we adopted here in NetJets, and, and we brought um, we brought uh, Mold IQ into this as, as far as having a shared vision for what we want to do. I don't want to necessarily read it out, but I do want to call one specific part of this uh, shared vision out to everybody. It's the trusted by all piece in the first paragraph. Obviously, we want to make sure that the system is trusted, that everybody that interacts with our schedule, and there are a lot of different entities throughout NetJets that interact with our schedule. We want to make sure that everybody that sees that can trust what Fusion Solver is building to the timeline uh, for us is, is, is correct, and it's managing through all the, all the needs that are there for the business. Um, Again, it may sound simple, but it really isn't. It's very, very hard to build that trust and it's very easy to lose it very quickly. Uh, one of the things we do to manage through that is having a very robust feedback loop within the business to make sure people have the opportunity to provide us feedback at any moment, uh, whether, whether it's small, big, whatever it is, we always say you know, the whole safety, um, a mantra, if you see something, say something. We always say that about Fusion as well. If you see something, just let us know because we want to make sure that it is better so that you do trust it. The quote, um, this came about very early in the project, um, and, and it was something that we heard um, that, uh, that, that uh, you know, one, of our, one of our users really wanted to make sure that uh, they understood what they were, what we understood what they were looking for uh, from this product. And it's, I'm sorry, let me, do it, let me do it right. Wow, I have a tool that helps me do my job. And again, sounds simple, right? But more often than not, it, what we saw, and having been on the, on the business end of, of, of receiving things from, uh, from IT, this is not a knock on our IT team, it's any product that we may purchase, you want to make sure that you're getting something that is actually helping you. Um, and, and to that end, we wanted to make sure Fusion was that product for, for a lot of people across the business. It's helping them do their job. Um, it's not there to, um, it's not there to, to allow them to 
basically create more work for them, right? We don't want to create, we don't want to see people creating workarounds with what we do and what, what, what Solver and Fusion produce on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, workaround for us is a four-letter word, and we don't want people to have to create additional processes on top of what um, is being produced. We want to make sure we're matching processes as much as we can possibly can, enhancing those processes, and again, um, helping people do their job. So really, the vision is to yeah, relentlessly advance the scheduling system that's trusted by all, but the goal of that vision is to have people say, wow, I have a tool that helps me do my job. Shelly, what do you want to add to that? I, I'm going to keep moving to the next one, and I see a bunch of questions coming up to you. Awesome. Uh, would you like one? <laughs> Are you on a roll? Sure. Yeah, no, go ahead. Um, so because you both use a large company's mainframe, is scaling not an issue for you? That's correct. Yeah. So because we're we're able to, you know, take advantage of the cloud and take advantage of parallel processing, we haven't had an issue with um, any scaling. And I can tell you NetJets right now is our largest uh, customer as far as data and as far as volume of data that we get. And we haven't run into any issues. I will. Uh, I'm going to keep collecting questions, uh, but go right ahead. Okay. Right, Jason, I'll let you talk about this one a little more. Was our partnership successful? I would say that this, these two pictures are actually one element of why our partnership is, is successful. It's, it's a fun picture. Um, it's you know, the, the, the Fusion team on the left, the Bold IQ team on the right, and it's everybody wearing a Fusion t-shirt. So why, does that, why is that indicative of our, of our partnership and, and its success? And I would say that it's, it's the little things, right? It's, it's taking care of people. Um, a lot of times in businesses, you see this, this vendor business or vendor or, or contractor business relationship, and it's very transactional, right? Here's this, you do this, I get that back, thank you. Here's this, do this, get that back. Okay, now we're done, go away. We knew that this was gonna be a long-term partnership. Um, how we build our schedule is integral to everything that we do every day. And we wanted to make sure that we had a partner in that that was, that was, that was as, as bought into what we're doing as we are, if not more. Sending t-shirts to Bold IQ was the least that we thought we could do. And you know, it's great to see them participating in that and being a partner with us to, to you know, again, it's, 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 it's a t-shirt, but it's more than that, right? It's, it's showing that they're part, we feel that they're part of the Fusion team. They're really helping us. They're really helping us build this product for NetJets uh, to make it grow and to make it succeed. So where we see that payoff and, and again, that relationship um, started very early. So back to 2017, when we first started, you know, we were able to work very well with that team and we were able to um, go from making, a, a, you know, signing contracts and, and, and creating, you know, and having a handshake and, and being able to go, okay, let's go. 10 months, in 10 months, we had a workable product for NGA. To me, that, that still boggles my mind that we were able to do it in that, that short of amount of time Any product that works well. I mean, it's not perfect. And the whole purpose of Agile is to not build a perfect product initially. It's to build a product that's uh, the minimum viable product, or as some people call it, the minimum lovable product uh, that can go out. And then you build upon that over time, which is exactly what we've done in the two plus years that we've had Fusion at, uh, at NJA. Um, We've seen it build, you know, across, and the same thing for NJE. We've seen it build and build and build on the, on the initial release. And that partnership is part of that and the reason that that happens. You know, we listen to the business problems. We talk about the the, the robust um, feedback loop that we have, and and that that plays hand in hand with what we work with on both like you and Solver piece to to make sure that they understand what the problems are here and how they can create solutions that improve not only Fusion but also Solver as well. And never believing that there's a limitation to anything that either company can do. You know, it would be very easy to go, well, they can't do that. Or, you know, uh, well, like you could say, well, Nedges or Fusion can't do that. We never believe in those limitations. We always know that the sky's the limit for us. And uh, that's just not an aviation, uh, you know, an aviation uh, uh, metaphor there. It's really just, that's the way it is. If we don't have any limitations, we don't believe in limitations. And we work together to make sure those limitations do not exist. Um, this all plays into and leads up to our COVID, um, the COVID pandemic, really. So if you think back to last March, you know, everyone's trying to wonder what's going to happen, what's going to, what, what's going to be the world that we're going to live in, and 
from an, from an aviation standpoint, I think everybody knows, I'm sure it's been a while since anybody's been on an airline. I know personally for me, it's been about a year since I've been on an actual airline flight uh, to go anywhere. In March and April, it was the same. Nobody really wanted to travel anywhere. Nobody really wanted to do anything. How do we manage that? How do we manage that when that does come back, when that demand comes back? How do we make sure that our, our crew members and our owners are safe? What are the things we need to do when we build a schedule to make sure that's the case? Lots of examples of how we were able to partner with Bold IQ throughout that entire process. The most important part of that is that we were able to partner throughout that entire process to make that happen, to ensure that both companies were successful, to ensure that our owners were safe, that our crew members were safe, and that they could still travel from A to B in that um, in that thought process of being safe and, and know that they're safe. And that could have never happened if we didn't have the partnership and the, and, and the working and, and the working relationship that we have between these two companies. So again, it's successful because uh, we treat each other um, as equals, and that's important. Yeah, I think it's also um, one thing I'll point out that is they definitely uh, we are definitely a partner, not a vendor to NetJets. Um, we also take immense pride in our relationship with NetJets and the partnership that we've created there. You know, as Jason was saying earlier, NetJets is a company of 7,000 employees. We're a company of 25. So they, they took a chance on us too. They took a chance on technology. They took a chance on newer technology in the industry and took a chance on a smaller company. Um, and we've been able to prove that we have been able to succeed um, very well. And, but it, but it was, it was really says a lot about who NetJets is and NetJets leaning forward with technology and NetJets leaning forward into, you know, newer technology and into the startup world um, and looking for really great solutions that can help them um, accelerate their business and accelerate their growth. So we do take immense pride in our relationship um, and, and very much value the partnership. And we have a lot of fun working together. So we have a lot of fun um, we meet regularly. The teams are constantly talking. Um, we get to meet face to face a lot, a lot of brainstorming and a lot of talking about what the future is going to be too, right? And how do we continue to evolve the technology? How do we use predictive analytics? How do we take this to the next level and work together to do that? So it's very much a um, partnership where we, we do need to work on the day-to-day. -day. We do need to solve the problems. We do need to ensure, you know, that as issues arise, we, we quickly deal with them. But we're also very much both mindful of the future and moving this product forward um, with new technology as we continue. And it's a long-term partnership, I think, which is important, right? We were both bought in. We're both bought in for, you know, a long period of time. So um, we're, we're definitely on on both sides here to make this work and, and here to make it stick. Uh, Shelly and, and Jason, I've got two questions. Uh, fantastic presentation so far. Thank you uh, for making it. Just wondering, uh, Shelly, did you, I mean, it, it would seem obvious to me, but you can affirm it, but did you uh, use few, the data from Fusion as the training data for your engine? Uh, and, and, if, and if so, for how long? Yeah, that's a great question. Actually, we didn't. So we had actually had multiple clients prior to NetJets. Um, smaller, smaller clients. So the amount of data that we processed for NetJets was the first time that we had dealt with that much data. Um, but we were familiar with the problem set and we were familiar with the space. Um, so based on, on that and based on kind of the history we had, we didn't model the engine around NetJets. Um, but we have definitely evolved it. Right, using um, NetJets and the complexity of NetJets, the amount, again, the sheer amount of data you're getting um, and the, the change that's coming in. So we certainly, as we move forward, we use that. We use that for a lot of our um, planning on you know, growth and things like that, but um, it wasn't our first customer. Yeah, and the reason I asked that, Shelly, I think, uh, you know, I think uh, some of the analytics folks who may, who may be on the call might uh, frame it differently and in a better way, but I was just kind of wondering, you know, so you, you started off with smaller data sets, as it were, then you moved on to obviously an immense data set that slide was just mind boggling, Jason, the number of flights, the hours, the, the crews, the airports. I, I mean, I'm just trying to imagine just the constraint optimization that's being run through in the back, uh, which is shifting uh, already. But I'm just kind of wondering if you can speak to this, which is you started off with a small data set as learning a platform, then your system learned, uh, and now you've partnered with a, what appears to be, to me, very massive data set. What kind of improvement uh, has the, the partnership with Fusion and NetJets has made 
to your predictability and the efficacy of the system? Do you believe? Yeah. It's a, it's a great question, Manish. And one of the things that we did we did do as we um, developed this for NetJets, as we kind of evolved for NetJets, I would say not developed for, but evolved with NetJets, we did take everything into the cloud. And that is when we became, um, we did put everything into Azure um, so that we could scale, right? So that we had the ability to do parallel processing. Um, we had the ability to manage this much data. We also we also made changes to the engine. There's there's no doubt that there was a lot of changes made to the backend engine and still are. We rolled a release a couple weeks ago that had um, some major changes as far as performance. So it's something that we continue to work on. And it is something that, you know, because of NetJet's size, that is a great data set for us to continue to work on refining our performance and improving the performance. Okay. So Shelly and Jason, last two questions for me, just, and then I'll turn it over. I promise I'll mute myself and put myself off camera uh, after this. So I've, you know, back in the day, I'm going to use the mainframe analogy uh, sort of thing. So the, the computing power that's being utilized to provide these solutions, what would you compare that to? Would you compare that to uh, necessarily having to have supercomputer-like capacity? Uh, or would it be just a massive, massive online, uh, sorry, mainframe system? How, how do I visualize that? So sort of computing power. Uh, I guess I was just going to wonder about that. And if you, and if you want to take some time to think about that, that's, uh, that's fine. But Jason, here's one for you. Uh, from a business point of view, uh, you know, before uh, Bold IQ partnership and before, however you did this, I mean, NetJets is not a, uh, not a startup anymore. It's, it's been in existence for some time. So back in the day, may I use the phrase, back in the day, uh, you still may not have been as large, but you went through roughly similar exercises, right? You had business people. What impact have you seen on your business, business processes and, and the profitability of the company? So, you know, how would you visualize and say, wow, this, you know, this AI based platform really has uh, put us uh, in the stratosphere. How would you characterize that? So think about, you know, back, you know, let's go back in the day, right? Before, even before I started, NetJet, so, and that was a long time ago. Um, but go back in the day, you know, we're, we're doing it off of uh, magnetic boards, you know, with little, with little strips and you know, you're managing 20 aircraft and saying, this one's going to go here, this one's going to go there, right? And then we transform that, uh, we transform that into uh, our, our, our home system, our homegrown system, which is called IntelliJet. And we create a Windows-based version. We'll start off with a DOS-based version for anybody that knows what DOS is. That maybe me and Manesh that are the only ones that know what that is. But I mean, start with a DOS-based system, and maybe you, you transform that into a Windows-based system that allows us to manage our schedule as we continue to grow. And as we continue to grow through, you know, I started in '97. We grew through the tech boom in 2000. Uh, we go through, uh, we go through the bust. We get through all the changes that have happened in our world in, in the last 20 years. And you've seen a system that has grown with that. We we change, you know, we change our intelligence system quite frequently. We update it quite often to make sure we manage through that. But along the way, about 2005 is when we realized, hey, we need something that helps us build that schedule. Uh, it's becoming a little bit too um, unruly for any person to grab all that flight activity and put it down on the timeline. So what you see initially from that is just something that again helps with workload. It doesn't necessarily build an efficient schedule, but at least gets it out there for you so you can start to work with it. So that takes one load off of you. And then as we build that system that continues to try to help with efficiency, um, but doesn't necessarily incorporate all the rules that we have. And again, as I mentioned, flexibility to make those changes to rules quite frequently. Um, the system wasn't able to keep up with those changes. So where it comes back to where Fusion's helping and where we're seeing this transformation in our business is really around the idea and that reduction of workload, right? Let me give you an example. So without getting too specific, um, just an example in a very general sense of, I have to manage crew members and I have to manage an aircraft and I have to manage a fleet of aircraft. And, and I need, as a schedule, I need you to do something to help me manage that, whatever rule set that is. Um, when our old system would come out and build that, it would not necessarily follow that process. So then now I have to get up as that, as that aircraft or crew manager, I have to get up, I have to go over to you as a scheduler and I have to say, hey, fix this and make these changes and adjust this for me. Then I have to walk back and do my thing and then I have to make sure and I have to keep checking, right? With Fusion, what we wanted to do was to take that process out and 
is just one example to take that process away from, uh, from the business. Of you don't have to necessarily come out and make those adjustments because your team's already doing it for you. And that's that reduction of workload that I, I think is sometimes hard to translate into a financial number, but it really is one of those elements that's very key to how Fusion is helping our business. It's improving process, it's, it's bringing about, it's one of the things we talk about next is really highlighting these processes and generating conversation that allows us to improve those efficiencies um, that may or may not show up on paper. If I don't have to come out three or four times a day and translate that into you know, 10 to 12 times a week, if I don't have to come out 10 to 12 times a week and tell you to make a change or get on the phone and tell you to make a change or write an email instead of make a change, I've just increased my ability to do other things. And that translates to other parts of the business. So um, again, without getting into too many specifics, I think that's one of the key ways that what we do improves what happens here in that chance on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, wonderful, uh, Shelly and Jason, thank you. I'm sure I'm gonna a couple of the, the Q&A numbers keep rising. So I'm, I think there's some more questions that were coming up uh, at 6.53. So go ahead. Um, I can ask a few questions or Shelly and Jason, did you wanna, did you wanna wrap up and then we can ask questions with the remaining time? So you want to think, Shelly, we can finish up really quick and then- Yeah, I think we've got kind of just one more major slide. Uh, Jason, that you can walk through, and then yeah, we'll take questions. Yeah, so uh, building off the of clinician's question, uh, really, what are we doing? How is it transforming metrics? Again, re reduction in workload, right? So it's I highlight on here, it's not less people, it's people being more focused on human elements. So we're not taking away staff anymore to, with the improvements that we make in the future, we're allowing them to focus on other things. And again, giving back more time to the business and improving that, that reduction in workload improves that efficiency relative to people. Well, I also mentioned the you know aircraft and financial improvements as well. Of course, I mean, we we invested in this for that you know, specific reasons to improve the financial um, aspects of our schedule and improve the aircraft performance um, to make sure that those things are that that those elements are taken care of and are doing the things we expect them to do. And again, sometimes the rules that we have, uh, whether it's you know again federal aviation regulations or if it's uh, contractual obligations or if it's you know internal process uh, processes that build rules around that. Those don't necessarily always equate to the, to the financial uh, gains that we might, um, you might be looking for if you're looking at something like this, but it does equate to process improvements and it equates to, uh, again, efficiency built there. And I mentioned also the, the highlighting processes. You know, this is a great conversation starter. Uh, and I love the fact that it starts conversations. I love the fact that we have a robust feedback loop uh, between ourselves and both AQ and the business. Uh, to make sure that that is generating those those process improvement opportunities, uh, managing, helping us manage through change, and allowing us to improve uh, not only fusion but also solver uh, in that AI space to make sure that they can build better schedules as we continue to move forward. So those are really the ways that it's currently transforming that chance, and, and, and those are, to me, those are huge elements in the way that uh, that we that we change the way we do business. Did COVID uncover anything in regards to a continuity issue that wasn't known that the team had to do uh, differently to keep the system moving along the business continuity manual? Um, I think the biggest transformation it made for us from a business continuity standpoint was not having everybody in the same room. Obviously with COVID, you wanted to start to have more people work from home. And I think that that was a big um, question that we had uh, from that perspective. How do we how do we build a software system without everybody sitting together and working on a whiteboard together, um, you know, answering questions and sitting? Really, one of the feedback loops that we had was sitting with our team to really understand what was going on. Um, how does that all work? And, and I think that what COVID uncovered for us is that, you know, quite honestly, um, none of that matters. We can we can still build a robust system. We can still manage through anything that comes along um, and still create a system that allows us to manage our business effectively. Thank you. Uh, what do you find that AI can most impressively accomplish as compared to operations without AI? That's a great question. For me, it's the having lived through both of our optimization systems and having been, you know, in that in that role prior to any type of optimization system and having to, to build a schedule by hand. I think the biggest thing for me is is that 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 real time almost real time you know, recovery uh, optimization you know, recovery system that we have and, and being able to, to, to give the team recovery options very quickly 
I think the ability for the system to be automated and run on its own uh, with very little um, interaction from any user to do its own thing. And then to build a schedule very quickly and get it out there and be right. And that's again, the trust by, trusted by all uh, element of our, of, our, of our vision for the project was really about you know, making sure that it is right when it goes out there and seeing how it builds schedules and, and it's able to be right and it becomes more right every day as we get more feedback and we get more adjustments to it. I think, I think that's the part that AI really has, has, has opened my eyes uh, to how that works and, and how it can continue to improve what we do. And on our side, I'll answer a little bit more because I, I know Jason won't speak to this, but what we have seen, especially across clients, right, is the, the pure um, benefit of the uh, revenue. So the operational savings to have more effective utilization of your crew and a very expensive assets, right? These airplanes are incredibly expensive assets that you don't want sitting around, not used. Um, so the, the pure um, economics of having the AI and having these types of solutions in house are it's pretty mind boggling for the for our customers and the, the POCs and the customers that are live with us today um, are saving a tremendous amount of revenue and or increasing their revenue, right? They're, um, or sorry, in saving operational costs and increasing revenue with being able to fulfill more demand and being able to generate more orders or delivering you know, more orders or more ultimately, or ultimately routing their um, trucks or routing their airplanes better so they get those um, the financial benefits of this as well. So thank you for joining us. And of course, thank you to all the attendees. Everybody, thank you. Jason, Shelley, once more, thank you and happy new year. Happy new thank year. You. Bye everybody.